player to molecular diagnostics. We try to bring it to a next level so that patients can be served with same day results, so that they can immediately start with treatment once the diagnosis was there. And this is all oncology based. So imagine oncology based targeting and detecting mutations in oncogenes which are clinical relevant only. So only those who make sense in regards to treatment decisions. That's based on the ESMO, the ASCO, as well as the CAP guidelines. So these guidelines are there to make sure that everything what is inside our cartridge as well to represent treatment decisions. And we are not alone. Because let's say well-known players, as you can already maybe see on the screen, have their strategical partnerships. So that can be pharma companies, but also other companies. So for instance, Johnson & Johnson is one of those companies, as well as Merck and Amgen, which are really focusing on and see the treat potential in our phenomenal product. In regards to these pharma companies, you have Merck, for instance, which is very interesting in, let's say, serving these same-day results. And there's a reason for it. Because nowadays, patients have to wait one to four weeks, maybe, until, let's say, an outcome will be there. So it takes quite a long time, a stressful period for a patient, until this person knows how treatment can make sure that this person will get better or not. And from there on, Merck has helped in regards to the development of liquid biopsy cartridges where we use basically plasma inside our cartridges in terms of doing some mutation analysis tests. So Merck is one of them. On the other hand, we have also a strategic partnership with Amgen. And Amgen is, let's say, they are also very interested in the rest panel. So rest panel is basically focusing on colorectal cancer, so to make sure that patients can receive same-day treatment, starting from an FFPE section until final results as well. So how will this be possible in general? This is all possible with our Idilla system. So Idilla is consisting out of a console, which is some sort of a computer. It's about an instrument, which can be seen three on top of each other here, as well as a disposable cartridge. And the disposable cartridge looks like this. So it's quite a small cartridge. And basically, this represents a full molecular lab. So imagine these days, you need different lab and laboratory setup, and nowadays everything is already implemented in this small single cartridge. If you want to know more about what is happening all inside, for sure I will go and introduce it, but I would like to invite all of you to our booth to be more to have this face-to-face -face introduction about what is really inside having the cartridge. So it's fully automated. It's the only one in the world, so there is no other system which can do it currently from FFPE sample towards result, so sample in, result out mechanism. And it's all in line with the sensitivity guidelines. So let's say if you have some ESMO guidelines, ESCO or CAP guidelines in general, they have described what is really required to include in your tests. And therefore we have, for instance, a sensitivity appreciated by this kind of guideline and we have implemented this in our cartridge. Multiplexing is another kind of phenomenal what we are including in our cartridge. So you can imagine for instance let's say that these days oncology fields sometimes have very limited material available and what you would like to have is to gather as much as possible information to serve your patients immediately with the correct information which will lead towards the right treatment. And what we are doing is we are using multiplex capacity to make sure that we can target multiple targets in one single reaction. Short turnaround time is also very important and that's why we have the strategical partnerships with the pharma companies. Because what we can do is serve same day results. Same day results means like you will start from a sample and that means the same results will come out the same day. So treatment can start immediately once this result is in. Therefore, our tests are all designed to report from sample in to result out in a time frame of around about two hours. So if you have, for instance, a tumor biopsy, you have to prepare it as a formerly fixated paraffin embedded tissue. And if you take a sample from this one and you put it in this, this coverage, you will see in two hours, around about two hours, depending on the protocol, that Mutation analysis will happen automatically and the oncologist
pathologists know what kind of treatment or next steps they have to perform. It's a very small system as well, and the system is also denied, uh, designed for connectivity, which means that if you connect this device towards to an internet connection, you will get even more and larger benefits, like remote troubleshooting to receive automatic updates, but also inside information in regards to PCR or so more information about your amplification data would be available. So it's all possible, it can work offline, but if you want to benefit from more features, you can also connect it towards the internet. Why did we design this system in general? It's for early diagnosis, to make sure that we can diagnose immediately, but also for therapy selection because we have to make sure that we don't provide the same treatment to every patient. Every patient is unique and therefore requires personalized medicine. So a unique treatment is also a unique cartridge. So is this, if this person is diagnosed, for instance, with a colorectal cancer, then we have to do analysis for the rest panel, just to make sure that if we find a mutant here, a KRES or an NRES mutant, for instance, then we know that treatment doesn't benefit for this patient. So then we can better not provide the treatment because it will have the opposite effect. So therefore it's really mandatory to make sure that everything will be tested according to the guidelines. And of course monitoring. Because there's nothing better than to see based on what the treatment is doing to your patient. Imagine this patient is currently under treatment and therefore we try to monitor every single time to see if this patient is still benefiting from target therapy. So it's really important to have the unique target therapy available to make sure that the patient can be treated and therefore also still benefit from treatment. If it's not the case anymore, then they can change and swap to another kind of treatment, for instance. So how will it work in general? We have one single cartridge here. And this is basically a full molecular lab. So all reagents are already included in this cartridge. So basically, even primers, probes, spots, enzymes, which normally requires a cold chain, are included in this cartridge and can be stored at room temperature. As a remark that room temperature means between 2 degrees Celsius and 30 degrees Celsius. And how can we do it? Because all of the, these reagents are spotted in a PCR disk and this is basically dried, which means inactive at the moment and therefore only will become active once the DNA will float into this PCR disk which is all in this single small cartridge device. So basically it's a single use only. Single use only means one sample at a time in this cartridge. You will open the cartridge, you will put a sample in there, and once this has been done, you will discard the sample because we want to prevent cross-contamination between sample number one and sample number two. So it's very important that this fully standardized protocol will always be followed. So in terms of reproducibility, we have performed reproducibility studies. And even after 700 tests for your, for, for your information, we find 700 equal results, 100% concordance. So you will always find the same results if you follow the instruction for use, according to what is mentioned for this system. So what is it about? What is really happening in this cartridge? So we have a cartridge which is for plasma design, but also for FFP. So two different kind of cartridges, but all for melanoma, for colorectal cancer, also for lung cancer. So what it is about is that what you will see here on the screen, sample liquefaction, also extraction. You will see that the lysis was in there. You will see that the PCR amplification as well as data analysis will all happen in a short time frame of around about two hours, always following the same protocol. Because the more human interactions there are, the more human mistakes you can make. You want to make sure that you always find the same results and having the same workflow in regards to this. This is basically all included in this cartridge. So there is no longer requirements of a PCR lab infrastructure where you, where you need these days three different labs, for instance, as a traditional PCR setup. You need molecular skilled people. But basically this system was designed that everyone can do it. It doesn't matter where you come from, what is your, your background, everyone can implement a sample in this small box because it will automatically generate the results for you. 
So this standardization brings us to the next level. It's something new, it's the only one on the market, fully automatically sampled in, result out. And as you can see already, the ease of use of the system works quite fine. You will scan your first sample, it can be barcoded related or you can implement the sample into the computer basically. You will scan a cartridge, which is all barcode labeled, so every single cartridge has its own unique barcode. You will link the two of them to each other to make sure that you don't mix up between sample and cartridge. You put the sample into the cartridge and at the end you will take the cartridge and you load it into the system. I would like to invite all of you to come to the booth to see that how this system is really working in, uh, in practical. Depending on the protocol you are running, it takes you 40 minutes up to 150 minutes. So it's depending what kind of test you are currently performing until what kind of turnaround time it will take. And in general, implementing a sample will take you only less than two minutes hands on time. So it's really, let's say, low time that you require to perform this sample. And even, let's say, contamination is these days very, very tricky. Easily, even if you are the best lab technician, you can contaminate something. Because DNA is already in the air constantly and we are working here based on DNA level. And therefore, it's really required to make sure that we try to prevent cross-contamination. And the more manual steps, even though if you're using a pipe, for instance, and using the tip, the filter tip, should be sterile, you should make sure that you always use the same pipe Is it calibrated? Is it not calibrated? So the same workflow. So really, the only solution here is standardization. And that's what we do. Same workflow for every single carpet. So sample handling is really important to make sure that we can serve the patients with accurate results and everything should be correct. Therefore, what we can tell you, for instance, is this system has been designed and contains internal controls. Internal controls will refer our results to. So whatever kind of results we claim, we should always refer this to a certain control just to make sure that we prevent reporting of false positives and false negatives. But there is more, because in PCR amplification you will see, let's say, an exponential phase and so on, until, in general, what you will see is a very nice curve. But the curve can also change, because you can see that the slope of the curve can be a little bit from a different angle comparing to the other one. And therefore, a lot of statistics are required to do this data analysis. This is all according to an optimized decision tree. Data analysis will happen automatically. However, we have to make sure that every single mutation which we cover in our cartridge is optimized. And we did it based on more than 100 clinical samples for each specific mutation. So whatever this one is reporting, there's no more need for you to do interpretation of results yourself. You just have to, to see what is given on the final display. And to convince yourself even more, we will make it more easy because we have comparison studies where you can see how is this system operating compared to other kind of well-known technologies. Just for your information. It's an on-demand testing system, which means you can accurately, immediately on-demand test it. There is no batching required anymore, so no risk of cross-contamination. And imagine that there is a very urgent sample coming in, you can immediately start taking a cartridge and run it into an IDLR platform which will generate in two hours the result. So patients have no longer to wait and they can immediately be served with a result so that the oncologists know if they start to have treatment or not. No more need to have this PCR setup, as I already mentioned. We will see that it's a small footprint. Well, basically you can see it here, but it's not representative. In general, one system will be like this. You have a computer like this, but I would kind of like to invite you to see it all at our group because our system is there installed. From there on, it's also scalable. So you will see here in the picture eight of these instruments. That's the maximum capacity based on this ideal setup. So you will see that all of the eight instruments will work completely independently. So it doesn't matter, let's say, what kind of test you're performing and what kind of instrument. If an instrument is available, you just have to take a cartridge, different kind of cartridges, doesn't matter, it will always fit in this loading system. And then it will generate your results on demand to make sure that your patient can immediately receive the, the results which they require.
required. And last but not least, as I already mentioned, no high qualified stuff is required. Because everyone can do it. So even though that your lab technician is currently performing, let's say, many of these tests in the lab, they still have a lot of lot to do in the lab. They can now even generate more results. So besides that idea is generating results, they can focus on other priorities into the organization. And that brings us a little bit to the overview. So what current tests do we have? We have a pipeline for oncology and for infections. Mainly I would like to focus here on the oncology platform because that's the main focus of the company. And we have solid biopsy cartridges but also liquid biopsy cartridges. The only difference here is the content. What should you implement in this cartridge? So it can be plasma or it can be FFPE material. From there on we have all test CID available for the solid biopsy cartridges which means we have a BREF test for melanoma purpose. We have a KRES and an NRES BREF test for CIDD for colorectal cancer purpose, but also an NRES single cartridge. We have an EGFR mutation test available for lung cancer, and we have the liquid variants available as well. So if I go more into detail, you will see that all clinical relevant mutations are on board. So that means seven clinical relevant mutations into BREF. So what is BREF? BREF is an oncogene which is harbored in almost 50% of melanoma patients. And what we will see is that a certain codon is clinical relevant and all these mutations are clinical relevant for target therapy. Therefore, it's codon 600 in exon 15 and for your information, you will see here a list of what kind of mutations are clinical relevant in terms of treatment decisions. So once a patient will be diagnosed with one of those mutations, normally they would benefit from target therapy. So it's quite important to make sure that you complete, completely cover the full clinical relevant panel. This is what we have for PREF and how will it look like if we see a final report? Quite simple, because all relevant information is already included on the final report. So you will see what kind of sample we have used, what kind of protocol, but also very important, the genotype, what kind of base change, the mutation, the protein, and so on. So it will completely cover everything what is out there as a PDF file. So from the computer, you can plug in a memory device, so it can be a storage device, for instance, and you can even print it from your own computer. If you would like to see more of this, you can see Idella Explorer. And Idella Explorer is an added value which will allow you to see even more of the PCR amplification curves. That brings us also to other tests, which is KRES, because KRES is for colorectal cancer, and there we are aware of that ESMO is describing exon 2, 3, and 4, which are all clinical relevant. So all the represented codons are clinical relevant, which are covering 21 mutations in total. If you find a KRES negative, it means, according to the ESMO guidelines, that you have to do additionally another test, which is NRES and BREF. So you have to do additionally testing for the NRES and BREF oncogene as well. And if you do that, we have another cartridge available, which are covering also for NRES exon 2, 3, and 4. Plus the BREF test is very important, because it has a, a, a relevance towards Lynch syndrome, which has to do with microsatellite instability. So it's quite important that you cover the complete area. Last test here in the solid biopsy cartridge are EGFR mutation tests. And this is covering 51 clinical relevant mutations, insertions and deletions. So besides the very common LA58R and the exon 19 deletions, it will also represent the T7090M, which can cause acquired resistance towards therapy decisions. So it's really indicating in seven genetic calls, for instance, what is the true status of this <coughs> mutation. So it will indicate immediately what kind of diagnosis can we do for each of our status, and so on that the oncologists know what kind of steps would have to follow. For your information, we are also participating in UK NECAS, so external qualification programs. So, and so far until now, sometimes people say it's getting boring because it's always a 100% score with IDELA. We always participated for lung, for colorectal cancer, but also for melanoma, and we scored 100% on all of these external qualification controls. 
So, so far, phenomenal results. But besides that, AstraZeneca, one of the pharma players, has also performed a comparison study. Just to prove and to see 12 different kind of methods which are into the molecular field, how they should be compared to each other in regards to performances, ease of use, turnaround time, and in regards to sensitivity. And this was tested in our KRES cartridge, which is designed for colorectal cancer, but they have tested this on lung cancer samples. So this is basically a sort of an off-label test based on our system. But if we check the results, and I hope that it's, it's possible to see it all here, you will see on the left side, the three, the three ones, there are three real-time PCR methods. It's representing the Kynagen from, from TerraScreen, it's representing the Roche COBA system and the IDAR system. Further on, we have the Malditov system, and we have also next generation sequencing, because next generation sequencing is also something like in a revolution, and everyone talks about it. Digital droplet PCR, and as well, Senga sequencing is included. And what you will see here is five different bars for each kind of technology. And what they did is they have tested different allelic frequencies, starting from 20% up to 0.5%. And for those, allelic frequency means the percentage of muted alleles in one single sample. And of course, if you have only 0.5% muted alleles present in your sample, it means that it's lower than that you have 20 of them. In general, what they have done is they tested five different mutations. And even at the lowest allelic frequency, we could still detect all five of them. Because that's basically the third one, and I hope you can see it, I cannot mention it, but it's the third test on the left side. If you compare that to all the others, you will see, for instance, that real-time PCR methods like a Terra screen or Cobus, which are more like using the traditional setup, where there's no standardization but more manual work into the lab, that these kind of systems cannot offer the same results, because basically they are less sensitive and could even not detect the five mutations at the lowest and the frequency levels. They could only detect one of them, so they miss four. And that's very important in terms of clinical relevance, because even the low mutant fraction should be detected in this kind of system. So therefore, if you check in general, the Illumina system, for instance, couldn't detect any of them. There was something going on there. Illumina was not able, as a next generation sequencing, to generate any of these results. Similar with Sanger sequencing. So the only next generation sequencing system, which is currently, let's say, performing equal to the IDLA, that's the Ongomai from NGS, which is the most expensive one at the moment, but also the most sensitive one. So it's a little bit of representative for those who don't know IDELA, that it's in line with the most sensitive NGS systems. So in regards to ease of use and turnaround time, even though that we have compared those pillars all to each other, we came out of there as best choice. Because what is more easy than just opening a cartridge, putting a sample in there, and your results will be automatically visualized on the screen. In two hours, you will already see it. So therefore, there is no other competitor in this field who can serve you with same-day results. So what do we currently have? If we see what we currently have for oncology field, we have a BRES test for melanoma. We have a colorectal cancer test for KRES as well as for NRES BREF. And we have the EGFR test for non-small cell lung cancer cells. All of them are CIV, they cover all the clinical relevant mutations, and they only need implementation of one small FFPE section. So that's the only thing you have to implement, one small section. And from there, it's the only one in the world who can, who can do this fully automatically. But besides tissue biopsy, there's more. Liquid biopsy, and maybe some of you already heard about it, it's also a revolution ongoing. Liquid biopsy can serve you even more. Because liquid biopsy is less invasive. You can imagine that if you're having to do a tumor biopsy as a doctor or as a surgeon, that you will have to, to ask the patient to come over to the hospital. It's a stressful patient, for, uh, that's a stressful, serious situation for this patient. And it's very, in, ge in general, let's say, if we are talking about lung biopsies, very dangerous sometimes. And therefore, it's much more easy than just taking some sample, blood samples, from this patient to do a quick centrifugation step and using the plasma directly in the cartridge. So it's very good, it's very short turnaround time and also representative for primary tumors and 
tests, as it contains also a similar mutation profile as the solid tumors. So solid tumor types are more suitable to do this kind of exercise compared to others, but the colorectal cancer as well as melanoma and lung cancer are perfectly suitable to do liquid biopsy testing as well. So you're not facing problems like limited tumor heterogeneity anymore, long turnaround time due to fixation process and as well. Sometimes after you take a tumor biopsy you have to come back, they can even not find a tumor anymore. So it's quite important to make sure that you can use this as a monitoring tool, but also as a baseline mutation testing system to see if this system is really directly telling you do this patient benefit from treatment or not. So it's quite easy. So you already see and I already introduced that there are some samples, some kind of cancer types are more suitable to detect circulating tumor DNA because that's basically what we are detecting. Circulating tumor DNA which is floating around in the blood. So you have some high fractions and some low fractions. So of course it makes more sense to detect the high fraction cancer types because in the low fraction types you sometimes miss the signal and that's what we don't want. This is representing here what it is about. So you have cell-free DNA and you have circulating tumor DNA. Cell-free DNA is just a combination of healthy cells and the tumor cells. The circulating tumor DNA is only the dying cancer cells which are released at DNA. And that's very good because that's what we are looking for if we are having a patient which is diagnosed with a certain cancer. So the principle works all the same. You will take some blood. What we always recommend is 10 milliliters of blood. Because during centrifugation, you will generate roughly about 4 to 4.5 milliliters of plasma. And this is what you require to do additional testing for. We only require 1 milliliter of plasma. And that's why we are unique. Because some other methods require 3 to 4 milliliters. They require a higher input level. And if you compare the input levels towards other kind of technologies, we are performing much better. And that's because we have a fully standardized workflow. Everything will happen automatically in the cartridge, like what we have already seen, and the turnaround time is equal to what we are serving already to our solid biopsy cartridge, which is around about two hours. And that brings us, let's say, why it's so important for monitoring, because there are two kinds of treatments. You have the target therapy and the immunotherapy. With the target therapy, we are detecting for a certain oncogene, so it's really important to see if we really target this kind of oncogene. And that brings us to one of the, the cases, which I hope you can see in the next slide, it is. So here you will see a patient case, which was diagnosed as a melanoma patient. Diagnosed with lung and bone metastasis as a V600E mutant. And this is a clinical relevant mutation in colon 600. So at the moment, you will see on the scale, from above to, to below, you will see the levels of circulating tumor DNA and on the other axis you will see representing the timeline. And what will happen here is, let's say, if you see the CT scan, there was some metastasis all over his body. And once they started with some BREF MEC inhibitor treatment, they could see a significantly drop down of circulating tumor DNA. So this is basically representing that the treatment, which is currently ongoing, is working for this patient and even becomes undetectable after a certain moment. Once they take the second CT scan and you will see the comparison of CT scan number two compared to number one, you would indicate, I hope it's maybe good visible on that screen as well, you would see the difference and you would indicate that it's still working. So this patient is still benefiting from target therapy. However, if we check the levels of circulating tumor DNA, we can already observe there is a potential response on growth. So maybe there is some resistance towards treatment on board. And this was confirmed 50 days later. So 50 days later it was being confirmed because the disease became progressive and they started switching from target therapy to immunotherapy. So th therapy is quite important in terms of, let's say, what is the level of circulating tumor DNA doing with your patient. Of course we all know therapy is quite expensive. It's expensive. It's also for a patient stressful because they have to take some medicines and treatment and if they don't benefit from it, they can better do something else. So we have to monitor here. And that's also, let's say, what is really important. So in general, we have the same tests in oncology for liquid. The EGFR cartridge is coming soon. However, all of them 
will also only require one milliliter of plasma, covering the same mutations as what we already cover in the solid biopsy. Only the clinical relevant versions. And that brings us, let's say, back to the menu. So let's say if we see in general the menu, these days I already announced what we currently have, but later on we will also focus on breast cancer, microsatellite instability, but as well as gene fusion panels like ELK, ROS, HER2, and so on. Developing more and better quality tests to make sure that we can still keep on improving our tests. We also generate an NGS hotspot panel. So what is it about, how we see it? We don't see NGS as a competitor, we see it as a collaborator. Because we have all one reason, one goal, to make sure that patients can be served with the same day results. And just cannot offer it at the moment, we can do it with our agile system. At this moment, you put a sample in there, you will generate your results in around about two hours to get information on the clinical relevant information, clinical relevant mutations. We are building this gateway system where you can take out the DNA, put it in a new cartridge. This will be automatically, fully automatically prepared a library for NGS. You take it out and put it in your NGS system. And therefore, we detect the clinical relevant mutations so that immediately the oncologist can tell, like, listen, this patient needs treatment and they can have the opportunity to use the NGS gateway system later on to use this for research publications, to do more research to see, let's say, what other kind of mutation types are interesting to do further analysis of. Thank you very much for your attention. I would all like to invite you to hall number 6, stall number F155, where we represent IDELA. And there we would like to take all of your questions. Of course, I still have the opportunity here to handle a few of you of them. But if there are more really specific questions towards our beautiful product, I would like to invite you. Any questions, please?
So you don't need any qualified people to... Not anymore. Everything is integrated. In so what is going to happen to us? <laughs> you can focus Are on you trying else. to get all the molecular biologists out no, of the lab? No, no, no. Please no, don't do that. No, no, of course not. <laughs> of course not. But I think there are many, many priorities in an organization. You are doing all kinds of steps and not everyone can... It is the collection of the sample. Yes. That is the origin of cancer cells or no cancer cells yes. or circulating chamber DNA or no DNA. If that sample is not technologically acute, people are not collecting that sample, then this kit is of no use. Yes, correct. So let's say a pre-analytical so phase. you need us. Of course, we need you. We need all of you. So a pre-analytical pre phase is quite important. Yeah. It's a sample source wise. That's if the right. sample is good of quality, yeah. to be determined by all of you, and then that we can use it all in the... So don't ignore us, please. Thank you. I won't. I won't. Any more questions? The final one before we move on to the next one. It's better than NGS. So what's, what's an end that's making even is a gold standard to sequence of a mutation and you're claiming that it's even better than sequencing? And how compared with the routine testing like uh, the real uh, PCR that we are doing currently? So what makes it better than that? Well, basically, if you're talking in general about NGS, it means, let's say, a fully complex structure. You need a lab technician who can do all these kind of stuff. You need different kind of panels. You need different kind of laboratory setups. You need different kind of equipments. So a lot of manual steps in general. So if you combine that all together, what we are doing is only targeting clinical relevant mutations. Sequencing will tell you all this information. So it's not really specifically for in vitro diagnostics, but it tells you all about it. So there's also a biostatism required to do the data analysis. Because basically I did NGS myself, but it's quite hard to get into all of these data and to find and to easily track all of these really truly important information out of the sequence. So it's really some data analysis required and so on. So it's quite a complex one. And if we are talking about patients, patients don't have the time to wait. They want to be treated immediately. So if I was diagnosed, for instance, with, with a certain cancer, I would like to know immediately what will happen to me. Do I want to wait one to four weeks at home, for instance, until a certain treatment can come and will I get better? I have no idea. So that stressful period, we want to reduce it by just making sure that we can show same-day results with this IDL system. Organizations have the system where your kit can be used, that's why you are yes. collaborating with them. Correct. Or is it to just uh, uh, verify you know, whatever you are claiming? No, it's, uh, it's basically, let's say, these Merck and these MGEN installations yeah. are strategic partnerships. What they do mm -hmm. is in all countries in the world, for instance, they will buy our tests, mm -hmm. they will put it somewhere in a lab, mm -hmm. and from there on, they will make sure that the patients can be helped same day results and then they can start immediately with the treatment. So there's a collaboration between Merck and Biogardis and also between Amgen and Biogardis and more to come. Oh yeah, that was my next question. Yes. Are you ready to add some more people who would like to join yeah. uh, this and group of It's currently under development. Okay. That's uh, my final statement in regard to that. Okay, thank you.